So about a month ago, a viewer reached out to me and was telling me about um, a case swap that he was trying to do. He was having some troubles uh, with it, and he got to the point where he said, hey, if you want it, you can mess with it. Um, if not, it's going to the scrap heat. So I'm like, hey, I'll gladly take it, try to fix it, and um, definitely do a video on it. So a couple of months later, here I am finally getting to it. Sorry about it. So uh, he left me a note with it, and we've talked on this via email. And guys, if you have any questions or stuff like that, definitely reach me an email, dlmtechgarage at gmail.com. That's usually the best way I respond. Uh, pretty much he said, uh, here is the motherboard I told you about. He included the aftermarket cooler that he tried to use for it. He had to do some modding for it. Uh, the issue that he had was the board won't boot if I tighten the heatsink screws down completely. Both stock heatsink and the cryo rig uh, heatsink have this issue. Uh, he suspects some kind of short somewhere but was unable to figure it out. So let's see what we got and um, let's take a look at it. All right, so this is the Dell XPS, I believe it's the 8100. I'll have to double check on that motherboard. And he actually included the uh, M.2 and the DDR4, I think it's 16 gigs of it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, possibly 16 gigs with the uh, i7-6700. So um, greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. And let's try to see if we can figure out what happened and what went wrong. So looking at the bracket, it says XPS 8900 series. I'm not familiar with this motherboard or this form of Dells. So I'll definitely have to take a look on the old interweb to kind of figure out um, how do you do the front panel pinout so we know how to fire it up. So first things I like to do when I get stuff like this in the garage is visual inspections. I know there's always the thing that says turn it on, verify the customer complaint, but sometimes a visual inspection will save you a lot of heartache and a lot of headaches. So I'm taking a look at it and I don't see anything on the board that's raising me some red flags. So take a look at the back and I know you guys might not be able to see much, but pretty much what I'm looking for is signs that something got scraped, damaged, um, any breaks in the PCB, cracks, bends or stuff like that. Um, I don't know how the camera picks that up, but I do see something right there. It doesn't look like it's in, uh, affecting any of the uh, traces for the motherboard, but there is something there. But outside of that, everything else seems to be pretty good. Typically, these little traces right over here, if you see a break or a scratch in them, those are the ones that you need to be concerned. I've actually scratched these and totaled a motherboard on accident. All right, so outside of that, I don't see anything too concerning. Um, the next thing I want to do is I'm actually going to take out these cables for the uh, Wi-Fi. This motherboard has a Wi-Fi built into it. That's pretty awesome. Next thing I want to do is take out the CPU. So the complaint is, is that the computer won't boot when pressure is applied to the CPU. So... That tells me we're getting power, which is a good thing. But for some reason, when we put pressure on it, it doesn't boot. So that makes me believe that there might be a possible bent pin issue. Or another thing that I find too often is that uh, thermal paste, when you're doing swaps and troubleshooting like that, we forget to check our hands and thermal paste gets where it's not supposed to be. So let's go ahead and pop this open. Um, I do see a little bit of extra thermal paste more than it should be so there is a little extra there so let's see how the bottom of the CPU looks okay so if you look right over here where this finger is I do see a little bit of extra thermal paste and I see thermal paste on two pads up here on the top right so there is some thermal paste right over there that would affect um, contact it's a little thermal paste over here there's a couple of pads right over here that have thermal paste on them, so a um, little too much thermal paste is, might be what's causing this issue. And now's the time to check the socket to find out if, well, we're having the same issue over there. So we're definitely going to clean this up. Let's go ahead and inspect the socket. So looking at the socket, the easiest way I find to look at these things is number one, through a magnifying glass. But also if you look at it, all the patterns should be you know, very smooth. There should be no abruptness in the pattern. Um, I do see one right over here, and I know the camera, the GoPro is pretty bad at zooming in, but I do see one pin that looks like it's a little off, possibly touching another pin. So I think a culmination of thermal paste on the CPU and a bent pin might be the issue. So what I typically do is I get a toothpick, and usually that is the best way. So now the pin looks like it, and um, I'm not going to do it now. I'm probably have to do it off camera so I can kind of zoom in with it. But usually what I'll do is I'll just bend it back. Now, if the pin has been bent sharp up or sharp right, 
there's a good chance that when you bend it back to normal it could break but this one looks like it was kind of bent to the side so it looks like I could probably just get in with this toothpick and just bend it slightly over because from what I can see is it looks like it's making contact with another pin so the culmination of the thermal pa uh, the thermal paste and bent pins something could be touching so let me start messing with this so for bending pins back and I took out the memory just to kind of make it things easier to see the best way I found to deal with them is yeah you could get one of these magnifying glasses will kind of give you an idea but they really don't zoom in as good as I like and I'm not a huge fan of them they work for other stuff but your cell phone a lot of these new age cell phones they have some great like zooming features on it but I was able to zoom in on it and I don't know if you see it on this camera but there is a pin that's bent over and touching another pin so with that that tells me where I need to kind of go and work it's still gonna be kinda of hard to see and do it but that's the best way I find to help assess the pin so definitely use your cell phone for that so let me see what I could try to do here now remember don't use a ton of pressure on these things these things are so sensitive I just bent it and I think I just fixed it actually it didn't really require much um, I bent it enough where it's not touching but if you apply pressure it would touch it's still slightly off so now the other issue is I want to make sure I'm not pushing down and messing up the contact and putting it farther away so doing this will make you go blind so upgraded to a safety pin whatever you call these I forget what they're called but it's a lot finer tip and it doesn't kind of smush like the toothpicks I should have used this one from the get-go I'll admit so I moved the pins back and forth and the biggest thing that I saw was that one pin was kind of bent over slightly touching another pin so I've moved it it's not perfectly aligned but it is enough where it's not touching and I think that should be better than it was before and also I made sure that the pin is actually sticking up slightly which it was sitting flat before so now it should be able to make contact um, the key to this is patience and trial and error and error um, just bend it little by little you get the most out of the smallest movements if you move it too much you could bend the pin break it or cause more damage so just little by little easy so now what I'll go ahead and do is I'll pop in the CPU try it see if it boots up if it boots up or good if it doesn't then I'll keep going back and forth until I feel the pins are better let's go ahead and clean up the CPU so our CPU has a bunch of thermal paste on it so we're gonna clean that up pretty easy isopropyl alcohol shop towel and I always find that to work the best and I've had a lot of computers that um dirt and dust have gotten underneath the CPU and has caused issues not booting weird things and that's always something to keep in mind especially when you get these used ones is clean the CPU that will save a lot of headache and also the CPU socket now I don't see any contamination or junk in the CPU socket and that's one of those things that if I don't see anything, I'm going to leave it alone. But as a last resort, if I can't get things working, then I'll spray it down with some electrical contact cleaner. And that will also help if there, it might save it or it might fix the issue. So that is a last resort. So the biggest thing I'm looking for on this is to make sure that all these pads are clean. So they make good contact with the pins. All right, so the pads look pretty good. I don't see anything that is broken, cracks, or anything on it. Uh, I'm going to keep cleaning the CPU up, and then I'll pop it in the board. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's pop in the CPU. Let's see what it does. Let's match it up. I'm going to use the stock cooler that the viewer provided with it. We're just going to pop in one stick of memory, because all we want to do is see this thing boot up and post. Oop, backwards. Eh, I say let's pop in a graphics card. Why not? Well, it's already turning on on its own, so see what it does. I'm getting no post. All right, let me try something. All right, so I went ahead and tried it the way the customer, uh, excuse me. I went ahead and tried it the way the uh, viewer had told me about it, and it boots up, which is interesting. So I released the tension from the heat sink and it starts booting up so we have to dig around on this and figure out what exactly is not making contact alright so I've been fiddling with it a bunch off camera 
and I'm finding out that when you apply pressure to it, that's when this thing doesn't boot, just like they initially said. So another thing I'm finding is, is that every time I take out the CPU, I'm still finding thermal paste coming up from it. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and use electronic cleaner. I've done this before, I've done this many a times, and it's actually um, saved motherboards, brought them back to life. So I wanna spray down the CPU socket and see if that gets rid of some of that stuff because apparently it's a little caked in there more so than I would like. It may fix it, it may not, but at this point I got nothing to lose, so I'm gonna give that a shot. All right, so cleaning it, put it back together, no difference. As long as you remove the tension, it turns on. So there's a pin issue. I'm more certain that there's a pin issue going on. So it could be that I need to bend the pin up a little more or probably bend it over and it's probably touching something. So I'm gonna spend more time trying to tinker around with these pins and see how better, if I could get them better. So two hours later and it works. That's right, it works. And to show you that it works, it's on. As you can see, the mouse is moving, not freezing up. And we can lift it up, just like this. That's right, wiggle just like that. And it seems to be working fine. So the issue with it was, and I tried a lot of different things, the cleaning it out, there was a lot of thermal paste built up in there, but that probably wasn't really the main issue. The issue was with that those two pins were bent, and bending those two pins was not easy. I mean, it was quite cumbersome and yeah. It's just hard to see them. That's the biggest thing. And yeah, I can use the phone, but then trying to hold the phone steady and then using the little pin on it, that's not easy to do. So something to consider. A lot of times you can find these motherboards. Well, not this one, but motherboards with bent pins on the internet. They sell really dirt cheap and you could get lucky. I've actually bought a few in the past uh, with a couple of bent pins and I spent about an hour or two trying to uh, pin them and line them up correctly. And sure enough, I end up with a good motherboard that's worth about $150 for about $10, $20. So it definitely is an option. And uh, to kind of recap on my tips and suggestions for it, number one, you need to have a good solid pin. I like using that little metal one wherever I put it at. I don't know what I do with it. There we go. I like using these. Uh, it works great. And the good thing about it is, is like, yes, the toothpick is a good method, but with the toothpick, it ends up smushing and it ends up getting thicker. This is more finer, for, especially for those small Intel pins. And using your phone or some type of camera system to zoom it in. Um, they do sell equipment for that, especially for those people that are solder. That would be freaking awesome to have one of those things because then it, the camera holds it in, it's steady, and then you can use your other hand just to do it. So that would be awesome. But using the phone work, especially taking the picture and getting an idea of where I needed to work at. And just take your time. And it's a lot of trial and error. I probably took this thing apart about 10, 15 times, just putting it in, putting it out to see I, if I got it working. And finally got lucky enough and it decided to work as far as this motherboard what am i going to do with it honestly these dell xps motherboards from my experience maybe you guys have a different experience on it in the past year i've actually had about eight or nine of these xps motherboards the 8900 i think the 8700 i've actually had them come in and not working just dead um just dead shorts won't power on a whole bunch of glitches um i had one computer that we just installed windows like 20 times and i never seen anything like it pretty much the motherboard was bad so I particularly don't like using them for builds. I love the Optiplexes. To me, in my opinion, the Optiplexes are very solid motherboards. They're great. I mean, Optiplexes that have been caked in dirt in the worst environments still work great in our solid motherboards when these, they're just not built like they're used to. So a big thanks to the viewer for sending this in. Um, I definitely enjoy doing it. It actually sharpens my skills uh, for doing the pins. And I'm very thankful because now I got a new CPU that um, I'm going to use for another project, the M.2, along with those awesome fans that he sent me. So I'm very thankful for it. So guys, um, if you have any hardware that you want to you want me to try to take a look at, definitely message me at dlmtechgarage at gmail.com. Um, we could talk and work something out. And um, we'll see what I can do for you. Um, Thanks for watching, and we'll see what we come up with next.